Applications that think for themselves. Our objectives here are to discuss a strategy methodology for making applications that are low maintenance, uh, scalable, and adaptive. You've probably heard that expression, uh, plus ça change, uh, basically means uh, uh, the more things change, uh, the more they stay the same. So basically, uh, change is a constant. So we have to build an operations intelligence system that uh, uh, responds to change, then uh, that is adaptive. So if we look at uh, stages of production, of course, there's factors at each stage that determine its behavior. And of course, response information or key process indicators, indicators are critical to quality indicators that we want to follow as well. So what sort of changes happen? Well, of course, there may be new products and services. Uh, there may be the addition of uh, new steps. Uh, uh, and each of these steps uh, may have uh, new control factors. And of course, the old steps could have new control factors too, of course. And if we add new products and services, well, that means new response variables may be collected. And even if we don't add new products and services, sometimes new technology makes things available uh, for collecting that weren't before. Uh, there may be new components or revisions to components uh, in, in, in current uh, production, uh, engineering change orders, and uh, just... Uh, uh, ordinary expansion, growth, and, and various functional changes that take place. So there's a lot of change that's happening, and we want, again, an operations intelligence system to respond to that. So how does that work? Well, it should propagate basically out of the database. So here's an illustration of a very simple database. Uh, now we come along and we've got two products currently, uh, product A and B, and now we come along and we add a product C. Well, the OIS should respond to that automatically. No code changes whatsoever. Everything just flows through. And likewise, when you add uh, factors, like uh, new factors and new response information, again, the whole thing should just flow. That is the goal, to develop an operations intelligence system that adapts to growth and functional changes with no or little maintenance. These changes just propagate right through the OIS automatically because these changes are self-evident in the database. And I'd like to demonstrate that for you. And I'll do it in three ways. One, something that mimics adding more products and services. Uh, something that mimics uh, a new response column. And uh, something a little different, um, how minor code changes can produce fairly dramatic results in uh, the uh, what the OIS delivers. So here's the demo. Okay, we have here a very simple application that uh, produces this report. It's produced dynamically, uh, and uh, it pulls from this uh, database over here consisting of different songs and artists and albums and music fans and the like. And uh, we can see that initially um, we've got 430 uh, records in the uh, database here, 430. So uh, just keep that in mind. And uh, so I can click on different, uh, different names, different music fans, if you will, and uh, different artists uh, show up depending on which uh, fan we have selected. And then over here on the right, we've got uh, different metrics, uh, the mean, the, you know, uh, for the songs and uh, the minimum just for fun. And then down here, a little uh, distribution. Okay, um, uh, just a, a simple little report. Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. Uh, to start off with. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to expand the database. So I'll just uh, do that. And you can see we've now got 483. So we've added more records. And now when I run this application again, okay, um, I'll see uh, an expansion. Uh, Steve was not available before, uh, but is available now. And this is uh, apparently what Steve likes. Okay. And uh, all the records that I had before are still there. Uh, but now we've got uh, the addition of uh, some new ones. So this additional data just propagated through, uh, with the big thing being that this music uh, fan area right up here uh, was expanded and new artists or whatever expanded accordingly as well. So that's uh, the first way in which um, uh, things kind of propagate through. It's the equivalent to adding more products or, or changing uh, component names and so on. It just propagates through. Okay, now what if we add a new response variable? So to handle that, I'm going to open a different uh, database. It's 
one here called Music and Rank. So I'm just going to tell the script uh, to open that one. Um, so, of course, at a real database, it wouldn't be quite this way. Uh, just a new column gets added to the database, but I have to sort of mimic that here. So now, automatically, no change in the code. You saw what I typed in there. But now we have rank information as well. And we also have the rank uh, showing up down here as far as a distribution is concerned. Again, no changes in the code whatsoever, just pointing to or working from the expanded database. Okay, one last thing to show you is that you'll notice for these parameters, we've got the mean and the minimum uh, show up for, um, you know, for each of the songs. What if I want the maximum as well? So this is the third part where I'd like to demonstrate where just a small change in the script can have you know, substantial change in the report. So I'm just going to come over here and we see where that mean and uh, min come from. And I'm just now going to type in or I'll add in max. That's it. I just type five characters all together. And there it is. Uh, max is uh, shown up. Uh, when we develop these operations intelligence systems, we develop with this in mind. We try and anticipate what might be needed down the road and build the OIS accordingly. So you can see we've got data in a database and changes in that database just propagate through to analyses, uh, to dashboards, uh, to reports automatically. Now, number of advantages, uh, in addition to the obvious, one is uh, that it, uh, we're validating the operations intelligence system on a higher level, makes it more encompassing and enduring. Uh, we're able to respond to growth and functional change. In fact, it's just automatic. Um, low or no maintenance, as I've mentioned, uh, but also reducing the chance of introducing bugs. Every time you go in to change an OIS or any application, you know that uh, messing around in there can introduce new bugs. Well, we won't have to mess around in there. It'll just propagate through, so uh, we don't have that risk. Also, an operations intelligence system conforms to your data, not the other way around. And that's rather critical. We, we don't want to re-architect uh, data in order to make an operations intelligence system. We should be able to work, and usually can, uh, with the data as it currently exists. And how is it that we're able to do this? Basically, uh, we've got good tools. All right, uh, the technology we employ most is uh, SAS and Jump. They work great together, and they allow us to accomplish these wonderful things. And uh, in addition, uh, we need to look for patterns. So we look for patterns in the data. We look for patterns in the analyses and in the insights that are required. And based on these patterns, we will develop the OIS accordingly. So to get started, we start with the required insights, uh, look at the data architecture, and relate that to the analytical applications involved which, of course, relates to the required insights. So we just kind of move across these three areas and figure out a strategy as we uh, develop or uh, architect the operations intelligence system. So in summary, the operations intelligence system architecture should be self-propagating, uh, should grow with your data, with your operation, low or no maintenance whatsoever, uh, reducing risk the whole way along. And what that basically means, bottom line, is that your OIS remains evergreen. Those benefits continue to endure.